The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Hey everybody, Rev here. Not much going on. Okay, that may not actually be true. I don't know. I'm recording all these in the future because I, right now, I'm on vacation. Everyone else took their summer vacation at the beginning of the summer. I'm taking mine at the end. Uh, so I am knocking out a bunch of intros so I can have all these episodes loaded up, ready to release. So we're going to just assume that there's good vibes. There's nothing really going on to talk about. Everything's going well. I hope that you are all having a wonderful August. For those of you who joined us at Gen Con, I hope that you have recovered. For those of you who are heading to Dragon Con, I hope that all of your plans are falling into line. And I hope you're having a good time with the fifth season. Enjoy the episode. Do you have a delivery? I don't. Then I'm going to have to ask why you're here. Well, because I'm thinking of making a purchase. You see a dozen people working at different stations. Some of the eggs that Strom had hanging in bunches. There are needles moving around injecting these eggs. There are people who have some of these unconscious scorpion creatures laid out on tables and they are connecting implants to them. Welcome to the forge and now enjoy a demonstration of some of our fine products and lights kick on all around you and you are in an enormous chasm. There are soldier units on the ground and they start attacking one another. One of the scorpions is cut in half by a saw and both sides instantly grow a new half and start attacking the creature with the buzz saw on its tail. But Tass, you notice in the very back There is a dull glow that doesn't belong to any of the spectacle being shown here. And as your vision focuses on this spot in the corner, you notice there are about a dozen large metallic pods and a group of people in piecemeal armor with matching insignias dragging them out and loading them into the back of a ship. As you are all traveling through the tram towards product testing, tasks you have seen in the back corner there is light coming in from the sun of Hydarnes, and there are people loading up these devices that hold the fully grown immortals. Can I see any detail at all from here on this? Like, I'm trying to get an idea of, like, oh, God, are they, like, shipping out an army right now? Like, is this how this works? Like, are they loading up for somebody's shipment, or is this something else? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think you can tell from here. It's all the way in the back, and there is a lot going on in front of you and underneath you as the immortals are being demonstrated. But you do notice that it's only a handful of people moving one at a time. You would not think that if they were loading up an army, it would probably be that small of an operation. Oh, fair. Uh, I think I'm calling back as this is moving past this area. Do you guys see that? Look, 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 back there, there's somebody, like, loading these things up. Shit, can they see us? I don't know. I'm, like, getting down in the coast, like, (laughs) hand over my face, like, I'm not in here. Everybody, everybody lay over your extra seat. I just plop down sideways in my row. Yeah, because, I mean, aside from doing something drastic, we can't just hop out of this, right? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you could. (laughs) <laughs> but are, would, wouldn't we be hopping out into like a war zone? Like there, there is a fight going on, right? You'd be hopping out into a glass tunnel above the war zone. Okay. Yeah, hunkering down. <laughs> okay. So as you all crouch down inside of the tram, uh, there is a couple more moments of going straight ahead before you feel the tram start to curve around. And as it curves around, there's this brief moment where above you, you can all see that the tunnel gets much larger and wider. And then it gets smaller again and turns back into the normal tunnel as you feel yourself directed back towards where you started. Can we see anything as we get into the larger space? Like, are there, like, exit doors or something? Are you going to get up? Because right now everybody's ducked down trying to hide from the people in the back. Yeah, I I think I am, like, like, I'm not fully sitting up and, like, looking around, but I'm pushing myself up from the seat high enough to try and 
see if this is maybe a place we could get out if we tried to. All right. Why don't you roll keep your head down? As no, you... no, no. I'm trying to keep my head up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Seven. As you poke your head up, you do see that there is a observation area that the tram has sped by so that it comes out from the main building and it has looped around. And at the apex of that loop is a big flat area where if this stopped, you could get out and kind of look down on everything and be here longer. But the tram is not stopping. But you do notice in the back corner, some light gets shined in this direction and hits the glass of the tube that you're in. Where did the light come from? The From the people who are loading stuff up? or Yeah, like they have like noticed the tram going by. Like, why is the tram going? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, There's a there was like a platform place that we could have jumped out back there. But I think we're going to have to know that that's what we're going to do and be quick about it if we come back around. But we've missed it already. Can we jump out now and just walk back so we they maybe don't see us? They definitely noticed that the tram was coming by. They shone a light up this way, but I don't think they saw us. I have... I, can't really tell without looking, but I don't want to look because they might see us. My only thought is, if they have a vehicle that can get around here without being shot out of the sky, that might be something we can use. Yeah, I mean, that's almost certainly got to be the ship that came in before us. So, clearly they had a way to bypass security or they meet the criteria for security. There just, there weren't very many. It was just one ship, a few people. Or do you think they're not supposed to be here? Oh, God, I don't know. Are they stealing these things? Oh, no. And I think about this time, the tram has accelerated and decelerated. You are now back in the main building. Dismount. Yeah, I'm getting out. Yeah, once everybody's out, it lowers back into the ground and the compartment seals. Okay, that hadn't occurred to me. If they're not supposed to be here, they could be like an ally to us in some way. That seems so optimistic. Yeah, I like that idea, but... If they're stealing armies, I can't imagine they'd take the time to stop and talk to somebody who found them here. But maybe. I mean, again, I don't know exactly what they're up to, but like, let's look. If we go and they start shooting, we at least get an answer there. Yeah, well. (laughs) Smash cut to gunfire. (laughs) (laughs) But like, we clearly don't work here either, so... I don't know. I'm Maybe I am just being optimistic, but I like the idea of a, if you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. We'll help you load your frickin'. We'll help you steal your space scorpions if you help us find a magic circle. Yeah. I, okay. If we're going to go try and confront these people, we need to come up with either a carrot or a stick that they, we can't go say, we'll help you load your shit because clearly they brought enough people to load their shit or they wouldn't have come and done this job. So that they're still going to shoot us to death if that's all we offer them. What if we turn them in? What, head back down and talk to Dion about it? Yeah, what if we tell Dion like, hey, we took the tram to see the product and we noticed that something was going on. Is that supposed to be happening? I imagine that this place has a lot of security measures in place so that maybe in the chaos of them focusing on... These people that are stealing, we can just go wherever we want to go and try and find the circle. I like chaos. And I like these people not getting away with monsters. We are getting ahead of ourselves here because this literally could just be somebody loading up a small shipment or something and they work here and you'll be like, I know, it's chill. But if that's the case, then we know we can't let them see us snooping around. Fair point. Okay, we got a plan. Summon the lift. Yeah, everyone take a deep breath and hold it, and we'll go back down to the smog elevator. All right, I don't think that you have to roll this again. Unless... like, I'm going to kill you just riding this elevator up and down. (laughs) (laughs) So you can either take the point of damage that you know comes from doing this, or you can try to re-roll it knowing that it might be a worse outcome. Can I take the harm, but then roll my keepsake to see if I can just negate that harm? Yeah, I don't see why not. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's a 12. Okay. I'm going to roll again. Yeah, I'll try again. Okay. I got cocky. Uh Uh-huh. I failed that one. Okay. Five. Oh, no. Jake? I've got a zero hit. Like, I'm not going to succeed at this either. (laughs) I'm trying to decide if I want to try to assist somebody. Can I even assist somebody? I hold a handkerchief over someone's mouth. I think first you have to decide if you're trying to redo this before you could assist someone. I'm going to not try to redo it. Okay. So I spend my time, instead of trying to solve my own breathing, Yeah, I'm just like fanning somebody else. I'm fanning the smog away from someone else's mouth as we go down. Yeah. Can I do that for the other person? Yeah. Who are you helping? 
I feel more comfortable tenderly blowing air into Megan's mouth than I do Taz. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's how this manifests. Yep. That's that's how it manifests Have for me, my baby. Carbon dioxide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do this for Tass, but I'm blowing across his open mouth Bernoulli effect. I'm pulling the smog <laughs> out. He's he's breathing it in instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't you roll the cyst? Can I just kiss Megan and then we're both holding our breath that for the entire length of the elevator? It's like uh, mermaids. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking <laughs> hook when the mermaids kiss him to <laughs> breathe underwater. Yeah, exactly. I got a seven. It's not It's not enough. It is not. With my plus three with Megan, that's a 10. So you can reroll your lower die. Oh. 10. <gasps> the power of love, baby. <laughs> this is the whole yeah. episode. Can you, can you... So the elevator Hate starts this. to go down. <laughs> And everybody fucking panics. <laughs> Kim tries to kiss Megan and force air into her mouth, which works. <laughs> You're like fucking somehow. <laughs> Jake starts to gently blow across Tass's mouth. <laughs> and Tass, I love gently in and there. <laughs> Tass breathes in. Don't editorialize. <laughs> <laughs> both of their quantities of dirt. Jake takes one point of damage. Kim and Megan are fine. Tass passes out. Oh, he starts to hyperventilate as this gets into his lungs and passes out. Tass, I think your system takes three stress from this. Ooh, like yeah. You have just panicked and breathed in all of this and collapsed in the elevator. That is the most realistic depiction of Tass as Tass that has ever happened in the history of this show. <laughs> the elevator gets to the bottom and it's dark. I'm going to drag Tass out of the elevator into the hallway. And roll him into the recovery position just in case. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I'm running forward so the lights come on since we know where Dion is. Kim, what are you doing? I'm running with Megan. Jake starts to drag Tess out of the elevator and puts him into the recovery position. Megan and Kim run forward to try to activate the lights in the hallway. The lights kick on and Dion is there. Again, he is mid-stride. And as he turns towards you mid-stride, you notice that his rib cage is shifted slightly to the side, like he's got too many ribs on one side, and out of the other side is almost a metallic scythe coming out of his bottom rib. It almost looks like a praying mantis's arm, but it's metal. Like this is part of his structure, or somebody attacked him with a metal scythe? Is the blade going in or coming out? <laughs> it is It is coming out. It is almost on an appendage. Hello. Oh, hey, are you okay there? He tilts his head. Uh. Uh, I look at Kim and I'm just like, um, I mean, uh, I had, we had a question for you. Yes. Uh, so we were, we were waiting for the liaison back in the lobby and, uh, we were looking around a little bit and a, a tram opened up. Mm, yes. Well, we got really curious and we, we took it and we were looking through product testing. It looked like there were some people loading up some of the, the immortals. Um, and it, it looked, uh, I guess suspicious, Kim? Would you say? Yes. We thought that it would be best if we just double checked with you because, you know, this is the first time that we've been to this planet. But is that ordinary for there to be um, some people in product testing just removing individual units of immortals? I do not know. I work in this part of the facility, but I will radio product testing to see if there's a shipment going out. Okay. He smiles at you. Could we come with you to... Find out. We're just a little concerned uh, that if it is not on the up and up, that that could mean that this may not be such a wise venture on our part after all. Come with me to do what? Uh, radio product testing. Oh, it's already done. Right. And um, how long will it, would it take for product testing to get back to you? Oh, they will only get back to me if it's something that involves the creation of the immortals. I see. All right. Um, we were uh, coming down here to to talk to you about this, and um, it's kind of it's kind of difficult for for us to breathe. You had mentioned that there are some like uh, medications or things that help you all breathe down here. Yes. Um, is there anything like that for guests that we could utilize? Well, we could recycle the air up to full. That would be great. Can we do that? Yes, of course. Well, wonderful. Uh, we will let you know if we have any other questions. Then is your friend all right? I don't know. I think so. Uh, like I said, we're having some difficulty breathing, so um, I don't think uh, he's handling it too well. Would you like me to take him to our med bay? Could we accompany him? Oh, there would not be room for all of you. Right. 
Um, let uh, us go ask him if he would like to go to the med bay, and we'll let you know in a moment. He seems to be unconscious. Uh huh. We're gonna try to rouse him awake. You know, uh, just just one second. Uh, we'll be right back. Very well. Yeah, and I'm heading back over to to Jake and Tass. Yeah. Hey, how's he doing? Dion was correct. He is unconscious. Dion looks really scary right now. Why? He's got like a big fucking scythe out of his like rib cage. <gasps> uh, the, he wants to take him to the med bay. We can't all go, so. This may be a good opportunity to see more of the facility. Uh, but looks like we're going to have to split up. I want to call back over to Dion. Dion, is there room for one person to accompany him to the med bay? Uh, yes, as long as you're okay with possibly being exposed. Exposed to what? Just whatever other illnesses may be in the med bay. I'm sorry, are there current patients in the med bay? Yes. Oh. Uh. All right, I'll turn back to Kim and Megan. Okay, yeah, then it, it seems like one of us can break off and go with Tass and figure out if there's anything to figure out there, and then the other two can go do whatever. Who wants to go with him? I don't think I should. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be really in don't. a close space I with Tass. I cannot afford to get sick right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we are looking around at other sites, I think I might be more useful there. That makes good sense. Uh, I'll go with Tass. All right, Dion. Yeah, if you could take him to the med bay and uh, Kim will accompany the two of you. Oh, very well. Uh, I whisper to Kim before she goes, while you're there, try to keep an eye out for any sort of, I don't know, communication device or something. I'll see what I can find on my end and maybe we'll find a way to keep in touch. Sounds good. From the end of the hallway, that double door opens and two workers come out with a stretcher and they come down the hallway and they load Tass onto it. And Dion turns to you, Kim, right this way. Thank you. And he starts leading you down the hallway into the forge. Well, let's stay with Jake and Megan. What what are y'all doing? Powering down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Assuming our position and then the lights go out and we stay there forever. Um, <laughs> what other places are there off this hall? I guess that's what I want to be figuring out. Like if they have cleared this hallway now and we have the opportunity to see what else is down here or where else we could go from here, I want to get a lay of the land. Yeah. So this hallway is just the hallway that leads to the forge. Um, it's where you encountered Dion before, and then he takes you through the double doors, and that's where all of the work areas are. And there's nothing else off this hallway? Correct. If he radioed product testing and those people loading things up are not supposed to be there, this could be our opportunity to go see what's on that other side. So, like, take the tram again and... Jump off at that point, yeah. Okay. It seems so scary to do without reinforcements. Yeah, well, I didn't expect Tass to pass out, so... Me either. <laughs> You should have kissed him better. You should have kissed him instead of gently blowing across his mouth. <laughs> I'm new to this, okay? <laughs> I mean, one way or another, it seems like there's nothing left for us down here. There's nowhere else to go, so let's head back up. Okay, let's go. All right, the two of you climb back into the elevator and head up, and you notice right away that the air is breathable in this elevator. Oh, Thank so God. much better. And it gets to the top and lets you out and then reseals. I am going back to call the tram. The tram rises up and waits. All right. This slows down a little bit, but then it speeds back up and we're not going to be in that section anymore. So when I say we're going to have to get out. Okay. So I think this is going to be act under fire to try and jump out of this tram in the area that is the observation deck. Do I get any sort of bonus since I've kind of scouted this place already? Unfortunately, I believe the two of us who have the worst hand maybe uh -huh. might have taken this mission. Yep, sure I see. Did. I see. I think that Megan gets a plus one because she saw it for a brief moment. And I can suck it. <laughs> and I will. <laughs> That's an eight for me. I got a six. I also have passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Just from adrenaline of the roller coaster ride. <laughs> I got too excited about making the jump and I started hyperventilating. I just blacked out. Can I assist? All this oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> Describe to me, like, how would you help him out having not fully succeeded yourself? Like, what are you what are you doing to aid him as you are successful, but not exactly how you wanted to be? So I don't know. Should we figure out your your um your worst outcome, your hard choice or your price to pay first before you decide how you help out? Sure. OK, so I think that you will either jump out and land safely away from the tram, but not in the exact spot you want to, not in that clearing, but you will be out at least. Or you're going to leave something behind inside of the tram, or you're going to draw attention again. I think I'm ending up in a place that I wasn't planning on it. Okay. So knowing that you, and maybe that's part of it, that you're 
jumping out late because you realize that Jake is having a hard time? Yeah, like I was all ready to jump out when I meant to, but I mistimed and then I was focused on getting him out as well because I know he was waiting for my count. So then that delayed me even more. Yeah, yeah. Roll assist. Nine. That brings me to a seven. Great. So I think that you can both get out at the wrong place, that she grabs a hold of you by the scruff and, and tugs you out over the side of the tram. I jump enthusiastically face first into the glass <laughs> tube. <laughs> it's like when a cat or a dog doesn't know that the screen door is closed yes. or the window. <laughs> uh, so you are on the far side of the observation deck. Like the tram has come through the tunnel into the observation deck and then back through the tunnel. But you are out and the tram is driving away. Try and sneak back that way to yeah. get eyes on where those uh, shadowy figures were. Yeah, and from here in the tunnel, you are still in the room, but there's just that kind of big open area made for standing as opposed to made to transport the tram. So how are you doing this? Are you more focused on trying to get a sense of the area? Are you trying not to be noticed? I feel like trying not to be noticed right now. Can we see the people that are loading stuff up? You can, but they're very far in the back corner. Like from here, you can even kind of see that uh, purple light coming in through the opening in the back. Okay, so if they're not supposed to be here, then the people that have been notified haven't done anything about it yet. Or they already took those people offline, so to speak. Like maybe they carved a path in here and there isn't anybody to get the message from Dion. So either way, I'm inclined to say that we are trying to go unnoticed here. Yeah, I think until we can get to a place where we're not immediately noticeable in a glass tube trying to stay unnoticed. Okay. Yeah, so both of you uh, keep your head down. Eleven. Uh, nine. So you're both able to make your way down the tunnel into the observation deck, and there are metal beams running underneath the observation deck, but the floor is still clear. But I think what you notice about this is that Megan is very well hidden here um, because the beams running underneath are wide enough that if she lays down, she's kind of hidden. They're not quite big enough to hide Jake, so it's possible that he could be spotted, that this could um, be easily blown as your mixed success. Uh, but you are both back inside of the observation deck. It is a big, round room uh, with a flat bottom and a domed top that looks down on what is now an inactive battlefield. Does there appear to be any way out other than the tram tunnel? Is there a way down towards the battlefield or somewhere else? Why don't you survey the scene? Okay. Ten. All right, you get a hold two. Uh, how can I get out of here? Yeah, directly behind you. Like if you're riding on the tram on the left side, if you had jumped out that way, there is an area in the back where, again, you see that very thin crease, um, and there are a set of stairs that go down. I will point that out to Megan. If we want to head down in their direction or towards the battlefield, I mean, it's the demo's clearly done here. So do we want to head down, see if we can get a better look or figure something else out? I mean, I'd like to try and see anywhere that we haven't already seen. Since we're looking for this circle, I can't imagine that they would keep a spell circle near a battlefield, but I guess we have no idea of knowing. So we should just take whatever exit we can and take a look around, I guess. Yeah, I mean, even if it's not the battlefield we're looking for, we can't figure out any other way to get anywhere from where we've been. So maybe we can figure out a back door from down here to get somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, let's get moving. Okay. Uh, does it seem like simply accessible or is this going to take some finagling to get the stairs to go? Or is this something I would have to spend another hold on? No, I think with the question that you asked, you can see some fingerprints on the ground near that area. So it seems like it does a scan and opens up when it senses someone. Okay. Um, well, before we vacate this area and I presumably lose the other hold, I'm going to go with, is there something important that I'm missing? So the battle is over. The demonstration below you is not happening anymore. But you see those metal pods around the room where all the immortals essentially reload to before they demonstrate. And the metal pods, there's quite a few of them. And they make a very familiar circular pattern. <gasps> oh, it's a good thing I asked. Hey, it's a good thing I asked this question while we were up here. Yup. <laughs> I think it's unlikely that they put a magic circle in a battlefield. It's yeah. Weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Then before we start going down the stairs, I'm, I'm just like, ooh, wait, 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 wait. What? Look, look, look at the look at the shape of the pods. And I don't think I'm as familiar with the spell circles. As yeah. Jake is. They've kind of dealt with them, I think, a lot more than I have. I've kind of seen them with, like, my grandpa doing stuff in the castle, but I don't think I'm really, like, understanding. What do you mean the shape of the pods? They're like eggs. 
and I say, I don't think you're as familiar with the shape of the spell circles as we are. You know, you haven't really seen these in action. You've only kind of seen us deal with your grandpa. <laughs> it's the spell circle. Where? The whole, the, the pods that the monsters go in. Look at the, they're kind of shaped in a circle. It's like, this is, the whole thing is the circle we're looking for. Oh, shit. So what do we do? How do we mess it up? I don't know. It seems mighty impervious considering a bunch of terrifying monsters just duked it out and there's like no damage to any of those things unless they're just programmed otherwise. I mean, I guess if we just start wrecking pods, like knocking these off their posts or whatever's built into the ground there, like we can just start destroying what makes up the circle. Not without being noticed, I presume. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to go down where the monsters are. I'm not really built for fighting in this world. Well, I don't think the monsters are going to fire back up. That sounds really role dependent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay, I don't know if this is an in-character conversation or an out-of-character question. Yeah. Me, the player, I was just kind of under the impression that the battle started because the tram was going to go by mm. and it was supposed to demo in character do i have any reason to believe that because now like those people were down there already oh that's a good point like i was for some reason assuming like they're here as a demonstration but also like it is a defense mechanism but if someone i mean i guess we still don't know if those people are supposed to be here or not yeah so, so that would kind of help clarify this like if this thing only fired up because we did the tram and those people were there to collect the pieces then it seems like those people knew to be there already and knew they were going to get the things because if they were here to steal stuff how would they have just happened to be there when we accidentally activated the battlefield for them to start stealing things okay i think i just kind of have these thoughts uh-huh <laughs> because i don't think i have a way to know that until we go down there so if they're taking the pods or they, they're but they're not disrupting the pods that make the circle they're just it's just like bonus pods yeah I mean, that's kind of good, because if we destroy these pods, then they wouldn't be able to use the other bonus pods to they fill it back in. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I also want to try and find some way of trying to communicate to different areas here. If I can find a way to contact the medbay, I can let him know what's up. All right. Yeah, I guess let's still head down there and maybe see where those folks are going or if there's somewhere else to go from the battlefield, because, yeah, we've, we've kind of seen... All we're going to find, it seems like, thus far. Yeah, it seems like we definitely need to get a closer look, especially if we're going to disrupt these pods, knowing how they're actually connected down here. We just got to get more information. All right. Yeah, we'll start heading down the stairs. Okay. I think I have to ask again, is this a, you're trying to do this quietly and sneak down, or are you just exploring the area openly? I mean, those figures are still somewhere back in the corner, right? Yeah. Like, they're still doing their thing, so still trying to be sneaky. Okay. There's going to be another keep your head down as you creep down these stairs onto the battlefield. Six. Also six. Oh, no. The two of you head down these stairs and step off onto the battlefield. And as you start making your way in the direction of this purple light in the back corner where this ship is, from behind you, you hear the hiss and release of a hermetic seal as one of the pods open. Kim and Tass, back inside the forge. Dion has led you back through the double doors, Kim, and the two other workers are helping to carry Tass, and they take him to one of the offshoot rooms that you all saw from outside when you initially came in here with Dion, and it's one of the labs that has quite a number of the immortals floating inside of these fluid-filled sacks. They open the door and take Tass inside, and you can see that they are prepping a sack to put him in. So what, what, what's that? What's happening here? Oh, this is a fluid that will help to heal him. Oh, okay. Um, how long will he have to be in that? It depends how badly his body is damaged. Okay. Okay. I'm like looking at Tass. I'm like, he's not too injured uh, <laughs> that I can see. Um, yeah, I, I have to let this happen, I think. The two workers from this room they pull down some tubes and start to fill a pretty viscous liquid into this sack. And they raise up Tass and lower him into it and begin to seal it closed. <laughs> I'd help you, but I'm in this sack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, what should I do? Should I wait here or is there um, somewhere else I should be? Oh, you said you wanted to be in here with him. I assume you would just... Get in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> I climb on in. We zip it up like a sleeping bag. 
Um, <laughs> would, would you like a chair or something? Sure. Thank you, Dion. Does he still have just a scythe rib just hanging out? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Excellent. Dion goes out and comes back in a few moments later with a chair. And while he was gone, the two workers have hooked the sack onto a large cable and have lifted it vertically into the air. And now Tass is floating inside of it. I promise if I wake up in this, I'm just going to freak out and pass out again instantly. (laughs) (laughs) But you'll feel so refreshed while you do it. (laughs) It's actually the viscous liquid. It's just aloe. Like you're just in a big <laughs> tub of aloe. It feels Ooh, that great. Sounds, that sounds so nice, so cool. Yeah, this feels like, this has a heavy like sensory deprivation tank vibes. This sounds really nice, actually. Yeah. They start playing spa music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dion sets the chair down and smiles and turns and exits. Uh, the two workers push a couple more buttons and you see some arms come down from the ceiling and start to give off different scans on Tass's now pod. Okay. Um, I'm going to give it like a 20 count for these people to leave the room. And then I want to poke my head out and see like what other rooms or like what else I can see in this area with the mind of trying to find some sort of like communication room, ideally, because obviously these robots are able to sort of wirelessly talk to each other. But that has to be going through some sort of central network. Uh, Yeah. Survey the scene. Seven. All right. You get a hold one. What can help me? From inside of this room, you can see to the corridor where Jake watched the two workers come out eating sandwiches. And there is a sign down that hallway next to a door uh, that reads radio room. Magnificent. I want to look at the like readout for Tass. Does it give like a like ETA as to when he's going to finish downloading or whatever? (laughs) What does the microwave timer say? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it does not have like a, a a countdown to when he's ready to eat. Um. <laughs> when is he going to be installed? <laughs> yeah. um, all right, then. Then I want to try to sneak my way to the radio room. All right, we'll keep your head down. Okay. Uh, that was a six. You start to head out of the room to try to sneak down the corridor. As soon as you step out of the door... Dion is there. He was standing next to the wall by the door. Two more of his ribs are sticking out of his side like large scythes. And his neck seems longer than when you saw him a few moments ago. Is there anything I can help you find? Oh, yes. I was hungry. I was wondering if I could get a snack while I'm waiting for my friend. Oh, yes, of course. I'll be right back. And he heads down the hallway. Um, fuck. Is, so he's he's heading the direction that I that I want to go? Yes. Okay, I'm going to use one of my stowaway moves, which is calculated risk. I am thinking about sneaking up behind him and using my garrote to attack him while he's going down this hallway. Mm. So I'm going to use calculated risk, which is roll plus head. And on a 10 plus, you will tell me what exactly could go wrong with this idea. Okay. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eight. So on a seven to nine, you give me a vague idea. I think the sense that you get here about what could go wrong is you have a flashback of the conversation that you all had in the lobby once you came up from visiting Dion the first time. In that sense that even though all of the workers down here are doing their own thing, having their own conversations, even though they're not a hive mind, they all seem to be very actively aware of what is going on in all parts of the forge. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try to sneak up behind him and garrot this guy. He's got a big, long neck, so he's an easy target. (laughs) You get a plus two on the garroting. A bonus for each extra vertebrae he's got in his neck right now. All right, roll inflict harm. Okay. To inflict harm, roll plus hand. On a 10 plus, choose one additional effect. You inflict plus one harm. You don't suffer any stress. Impress, intimidate, or frighten your enemy. Force them where you want them to go. You or an ally take a plus one forward. And then on a seven to nine, you inflict harm, but open yourself up to harm in return. And on a miss, you suffer harm and take a stress without inflicting any back. Against all odds, that was a 10. Yeah, I think it's a nine. I think I'm going to use one of my two hold. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. So you sneak up behind Dion and throw the garrot around his neck. How much damage does it do? Oh, you know, it only does one intimate, very intimate. I imagine I'm on this guy's back. 
All right, so your garrot does one harm, and doing this does cause you one stress. Uh, anytime you inflict harm, it causes stress. You give a tug, and Dion's head comes off pretty easily, hits the ground, and rolls away. You don't take any harm, but you do take two stress as all three of these protruding ribs rotate 180 degrees and clamp you to the back of his body. <gasps> He reaches down, picks up his head, and starts to walk you back towards the room where Tass is in a pod, where the two workers are already preparing one for you. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow. 